and we're rolling. Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is we are at if you can read it drupal camp london 2016 i'm with two of the organizers walio raman <coughs> and ben wilding just so that we know who you are and what you're about why don't you tell me how long you've been doing drupal mm-hmm. how you discovered drupal and what you do with drupal nowadays okay um so after university um i did computer science at uni um after I graduated, I wanted to do my own business, so I started doing some web development, um, did a few sites, um, and I stumbled upon Drupal. And then I wanted to know more about Drupal, so I actually volunteered for Drupal Camp 2013. So I was actually giving out um, some food in the CXO day, um, and Jamie from um, the H. She was the director of HR at the time at Acquia. I was giving some food out. Um, she said, oh, I said, um, would you like some food? She said, would you like a job? And then I had two interviews on the spot. And then the next day I had another interview um, with the um, director of support at the time. Um, and that's how it started. And I wasn't looking for a job. I just wanted to know more about um, Drupal Camp. And now you're in global support at Acquia. Yes, and now I work at um, Acquia as a support engineer. The dream can come true, kids. <laughs> Discovered waiting tables. Now Drupal professional. How cool is that? Yeah. Wow. So at community events, like all sort, literally anything can happen, I guess. Yeah. That's a great story. Um, ben, how long have you been doing Drupal? What's your first Drupal mm-hmm. memory? Uh, my first Drupal memory is uh, 4.7 in 2006, uh, working in, with an old friend of mine, Neil Cameron. We were setting up a uh, language exchange social network. So our backgrounds were both in uh, languages at university and uh, language exchanges were the best way to practice. And it was the hype of MySpace, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> um, and Facebook blooming, etc. So we kind of paired the ideas up and you would search on someone's native language and they would search on yours and you were learning vice versa. Uh, and you could uh, learn from each other. So um, I'm not particularly technical. So my experience was 4.7 as a kind of back-end administrative editorial type experience. <clears throat> which was um, good at times and not so good at others, but we've come a long way. <laughs> right. Now, now, in the irony of, of, of life, how many times have you had potential clients come to you and say, all I want, right, is exactly Flickr and Facebook and then with a little bit of YouTube and Facebook just smashed together because I have this killer idea. Uh, a lot, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's sort of, you just said that yeah. like, that's what you were doing, which is nice, but... <laughs> this idea has actually turned into a thriving Drupal business in London. Yep. So you run... I am Managing Director of Cameron & Wilding, and we're based in London and been going for just over six years now, a team of 17, and specialize in medium, large-scale, enterprise-level uh, Drupal builds. Congratulations. So, thank you very much. Paying the rent for several people? Yep. How big is Cameron & Wilding now? About 17 people. Wow, yep. that's a great size. Yep. And that's we're working a... with some good brands, uh, Telegraph, The Economist, Imperial War Museum. So um, yeah, done a, a good job of uh, punching above our weight, I think. Nice. So now, everybody put on your Drupal Camp organizer hats mm-hmm. and take off your company hats. <clears throat> You've been organizing Drupal Camp London. I guess there have been, well, we're in the middle of the fourth. Yep. You've been on the team for all four. Yep. You've been on the team for at least... Um, so in 2013, I started volunteering. Right. And I've always done um, volunteers from, for the last three years, I yep. think. Yeah, for the yep. last three years. And um, for the last two years, I've um, been asked to actually help organize the event as well. So Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So this is, in, in for me, in perhaps the largest... Most important, somehow, I, I did, if you're listening to the audio, I did giant air quotes, uh, 
it's a it's a big important Drupal camp in the European scale. It might be the biggest one mm-hmm. um, in terms of large events around the world. If we exclude the amazing and gigantic <laughs> Indian community. Um, <clears throat> In the rest of the world, I think it's probably after Bad Camp and Nice Camp and DrupalCon, it's one of the biggest around. Yeah. And I really enjoy Drupal Camp London because I get to meet people literally from all over the world. It's important enough here that people mm. um, come from everywhere to come here, not just Europe, not just the UK, but from everywhere. How, did you, how, did, how do you manage <clears throat> to, what's the draw? Why, why does that work so well? It's a really good question. I think scale certainly helps because you can come to one key event and know that you're going to hook up with lots of old friends, colleagues, opportunities all in one location because we've got, you know, between five, six hundred people here over the course of the weekend. Uh, so that really helps. Um, I think London's obviously uh, and the UK is a thriving central point and it's always had a really good uh, Drupal market. Um, So there's always been a lot of agencies here already and a lot of users of Drupal, um, global and local. Um, And I don't know, I think uh, the scale and how we've worked quite hard to make sure it's very inclusive. Um, We promote it as much as we can. Um, And off the back of that, you know, the success of the first year, which was critical for us, we made a point of making sure it was only 350 people year one because we wanted to know we could sell it out and we wanted Mm. to know we could handle the numbers. Uh, And that worked really well and was really popular. So then we jumped up to pitching for five, six hundred people for the weekend. Uh, And because of that scale, uh, it's like a mini Drupal con, really. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we've always got... um David Hall coming over from Australia usually. Um, we've had people from Japan, uh, the you know US, uh, Latin America, etc. And I know someone's come over from um, India, uh, landed on Thursday, is here just for the Drupal camp, and is going back on Sunday. Whoa! <clears throat> wow, that is impressive. It's probably Ashish, right? Mm-hmm. Ashish yeah. Jain. Yeah, and shout out Ashish. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, he's volunteering for the event as well. Yep, he's keen, and he's a sponsor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Most important Drupal camper this weekend, potentially. Um, yep. I like that you have a great business day, great technical community days. You have sprints. You have good food. I, I really think um, it's, it's plus the people, you know, mm. of course, make it. Yeah, what the community is a bit of it, you know. Right. But how do you, <laughs> when you're planning, how do you, how do you, know what the right balance is? How do you try and satisfy all the diverse needs of different um, attendees? Good question. Um, I think it's constantly a work in progress. Uh, We were very open from day one to try and get feedback. Um, It's a bit more of a a well-practiced machine these days, but in that first year, 2013, uh, we had open meetings running for about six months where anyone could come along. we were discussing what topics, how we should cover them, that type of engagement. And I think that really helped. Um, so we made a good point in that first year of getting the engagement from the whole of the community because it was for the community. Um, and then that kind of narrowed down to the core, to core team that actually delivered on getting the event done. But that sort of buy-in really helped to shape it from day one because it was always by the community for the community. Um, I think also the volunteers and people that put the event on, there's a broad range. I'm more from the business side. You know, Wally is a big company, Acquia, doing the support side of things. Um, you know, you've got business people, you've got freelancers, you've got, um, you know, people working at big companies, small companies. So that, that variety naturally helps us keep it spicy and, you know, have that variety because we know that um, you know, there's lots of different needs and wants out there. And... Um each year, what are, what are the sort of improvements that you've made to the process or the or the or the contents <clears throat> along the way? I think it's been um, quite a nice agile iterative approach. So <laughs> wait, we can get more buzzwords in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had some lean startup principles in right, the first few years. Right, and then we're years. disrupting yeah. the concept of community events. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know? Um, <laughs> Lots yeah. of emails. <laughs> So. Yeah, so I think one small kind of example of that is BOFs this year have actually taken off. Last year, they didn't work particularly well. Mm. I think we were booking BOFs online last year, but for whatever reason, yeah. it wasn't quite working. This year, there's a bit of paper by reception and people are jotting it down under the number and they're just uh, hashtag yeah. uh, DCL BOF. Yeah. And it seems to be working. So nice. So you combined, like you combined, you went back to like old tried and trusted technology yeah. mm-hmm. on the one hand, but then... Tweeting those out with a specific yeah. hashtag, that sounds like a great comment. And the great thing about that is once it's tweeted, it actually appears on the site. Yeah. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, that's a really, really nice tip. 
Speaking of, of uh, speaking of improvements over time, you've been involved for a few years, and I think you've been observing some ways that you suspect that all of us could do community events better and get more out of them. Can you talk about your what you um, sort of this concept that you're pulling together? Um, yeah, so we've been meeting um, uh, on a regular basis, and um, we're always constantly trying to improve the camp, the processes. We always want to bring in more sponsors, more attendees. Um, but um, when you want to do that, you also have to be more efficient at uh, things that you do. Um, so I jot down some ideas um, on how we can how we can go about doing that. Um, I ripped off Amazon's flywheel. Um, um, uh, diagram where to grow the camp we should concentrate on sales and marketing um, create videos um, um, uh, market it at different um, Drupal meetups etc um, so that way uh, we can show the value to the attendees and the sponsors um, but that also creates lots of other problems. So if we get more attendees and more sp um, sponsors, um, we have to be more efficient at th the things that we do. Um, so to do that, we are creating a um, distribution called Cream. And we're going to put all the features and everything that we need to do in that distribution. So for example, um, I run the volunteers. And a lot of things that I'm doing, I'm doing it on a spreadsheet and I'm emailing out people. When a volunteer cancels, I have to go and update the spreadsheet. And um, then um, sometimes we get replacements, sometimes we don't, mm -hmm. etc. That's all manual work. And really, there is a logic to it. And if we can capture all the business logic and integrate that into the site, we don't need to lift a finger. And that way, every year we can reuse that um to increase our productivity so once we do that what we can then do is focus on the sales and marketing side of things and then it's like a big cycle um, and as we get more attendees and more sponsors um, we can concentrate on um, um, almost like um, speed dating uh, in the sense that we can actually um, help the sponsors and the attendees meet um, um, we can um, arrange um, uh, I don't know, meetings. Uh, so you uh, can things. you can once the basics are covered and semi automated at least. Yeah. You can you can focus on um, the things that add value to the event. Yeah. You have time and energy freed up to try out new things. Exactly. Um, I did business speed dating at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and mm -hmm. it was really really interesting. Yeah. I don't. Um, I think it actually resulted in an actual lead and an actual, you know, um, I don't think it turned into work for Acquia, but mm -hmm. it was, that was very interesting. And I, you know, I met a ton of interesting people. And I think in the context of, of a much more specific conference, like a, like a Drupal conference, there's a, there's a good chance that, yeah. um, mm -hmm. what if that's job interview yeah. speed dating or what if that's. Yeah. yeah the point is to <clears> try and, um, help. Um, people meet each other um, for the various reasons that they are there. So mm. some people are looking for hires, um, new hires, some people are looking for new leads, some people are looking for new partners. And if we identify um, why each attendees are there, then we can actually make those links and connection and help them along rather oh. than they have, to, rather than them actually going and trying Hoping. to randomly find someone. Right. And, you know, so that way we can increase the value of coming to the camp for everybody. Right. And if we are more productive at it, then we don't need to concentrate on actually doing the logistics side of things. Um, and it's a vicious cycle, and that's how we would grow the camp. So I really like the idea of making a camp more valuable. Yeah. Right? For the community, yeah. for everyone who's involved yeah. with that. And I was speaking to Michael Myers, actually, um, at Acquia. He's the vice president of de um, developer relations. And... Um, we um, thought an idea of actually bringing sponsors on board in the sense that when we have regular meetings on how we can improve the camps, we can actually bring them on board and have get their feedback and what you know what they need, mm -hmm. and then bake that into the cream distribution oh. as well. So another thing is, um, 
for example, to increase sponsor value, we approached um, a company called Lemberg, um, who's a Drupal shop, and they cr they create um, um, uh, apps um, for DrupalCons um, for, um, for the sessions, etc. And we've kind of um, because they've already created that, we've um, we've managed to provide them feeds directly from our website. Um, so every time we update a session, for example, it gets automatically updated mm. on the app. Mm. Um, so now that's all built in. We don't need to concentrate on that. We don't need to put any edge energy on that, and that's done. That's every a very app. nice app, by the way. Thank mm. you, Lemberg Solutions. Thank you. Mm. Okay, so this is really exciting. So now, Cream is <coughs> is perhaps a, a successor of the COD distribution, the conference organizing distribution in a way. I, is Cream also available on Drupal.org? Yes, it's a distribution that's available, um, and it's um, run by Alex Burrows, and um, it will be Paul Rowell who will also be a contributor to it, I would say, as well. This document that you're putting together of these ideas, is that going to turn into some sort of a manual or a wiki or an a checklist? Yeah, or? at the moment it's on the first draft and um, it's just lots of different ideas and we're just brainstorming everything. Okay. Um, so slowly we're going to improve that as we have meetings um, amongst ourselves and as we have meetings with sponsors and figure out what they okay. need. And from that we can extract features that we can bake into Cream. Right. So at the moment Cream is at its basic level. Um, it doesn't do everything, <clears throat> but okay. we hope to improve it. Now to add one more layer of benefit to all of this, we've been talking about the fact that you would like other conference organizers, other Drupal camp Correct. organizers to come in and exactly. also be part of this, take mm -hmm. advantage of what you're yeah. doing immediately, but yeah. also contribute ideas yeah. and contribute to the distribution. So, so Drupal camp London, not only is it a great event, but I really, really admire how you're trying to figure out what the, how to make it targeted and, and, and more beneficial to everyone who's coming. I really like that. Thank you for doing it. If you haven't been to Drupal camp London, I would say just go ahead and you know, book some space in spring of 2017 to come to the next one. And uh, it's nearly always the last weekend of February into March. So you can pretty much pencil that in. Right. So, and I will always be here, <coughs> I guess, unless it's carnival in Cologne, in which, in, in which case then, uh, yes, we had that once. <laughs> yeah. You had to dash back. <laughs> it was, I had a party to go to. <laughs> um, yeah, but we learned our lesson there. Yeah. Hey, so thank you for all your hard work. I think that the camps are great already. And this idea of, mm -hmm. of contributing really valuable information about doing camps. But I'm really, really excited about that. And, and thanks, for, thanks for that. It's cool. Right. Thank you You're for welcome. coming for four years straight and speaking. <laughs> I really, yeah, I, that's, I'm, it's my real privilege. And, I'm, and thanks for inviting me. It's, I mean, I'm Every glad time. I can do my part. I'm glad Good. I can do my part. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cool.